Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be bonding the new fenders and side skirt to the blade. Uh, I'll show you guys how I prep everything and what I'm going to use these Clico pins for. These are essentially going to be used to, to hold everything in place. And I'll be using this uh, new bonding adhesive that I have. I've been testing it. It's working out pretty good. And I think I'm good to go uh, with it. But first, I need to get this giant tire out so I have more access. All right guys, so now I've removed the rear tire and that's gonna allow me access to the, uh, the, the rear fender well area. I need to remove some parts up inside there and cut some pieces out uh, just because I'm not gonna be bonding to it and I just need to get it out of the way before I start uh, bonding the fenders together. Uh, I also need to make another cut on this part of the side skirt. That'll essentially make these um, two pieces from the front to the rear and that'll be better for mold making and part replacement uh, you know all that stuff uh, in case you know you blow a tire out or have an accident it's gonna be easier to replace the this section versus this section and then there'll be another cut line right here which is where the old cut line was to to the previous hood uh, design and that's gonna uh, you know make it so that we can replace the bumper uh, independently as well as the side fender and then also you have the the hood area so uh, with that said i'm going to start uh, making this cut and then i'm going to remove these pins i'll uh, sand the surfaces and start prepping and get it ready for uh, the bonding glue or epoxy and that'll be basically it at that point i'll put the pins back in i'll show you those um, these are basically clico pins I don't know if you've got, I think I've done a video on this before in the past, but just to get a close up of these, um, you can kind of see that's what it looks like. It's basically like a rivet and it's reusable. So you just use this tool to mash it down and then you can pull it out uh, and reuse it. So it's really good for holding panels together. And what happens underneath there, as you can see, when you have it pressed, it splits apart. I don't know if you can see that or not. So that kind of does this little split action. And as it pulls back, it spreads out and it actually pulls the two pieces together with, with pretty good force. Um, these are pretty heavy duty ones. There's all different kinds. There's a, a, you know, depending on the material you're using and the size and how heavy it is. There's small ones, big ones, giant ones. There's some that are huge. Uh, but these are your typical ones for metal body work, but they work really well for fiberglass because fiberglass is usually a lot thicker than say metal or aluminum. And these are pretty long and they go all the way through to hold the pieces together. So anyway, with that said, I'm going to get started and start removing some of the stuff and uh, bonding everything together. All right guys, so I have now added uh, a lot more uh, Clico pins around the new fender. And this is just to make sure it secures itself to the surface for uh, good bonding and stuff like that. So anywhere I saw like maybe a potential of a little bit of a gap, then I, I wanted to make sure it was completely flush against the, uh, the material and had a good bond. Um, if there's a little bit of a gap, it's okay. There's some areas kind of like right there where there is going to be uh, a, a little bit of a gap. And what I can do is I can add a little bit of filler to the, uh, the epoxy mix. And uh, kind of it's a, uh, I don't know, it's, it's like a glass bead fill, filler. I have it somewhere, but I don't know exactly where it's at at the moment. But I'll add that 
to um, to the areas that I have a little bit more gap and that gives it a little bit more uh, bonding surface and strength to the actual epoxy along you know with it bonding to the surface so anyway so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go along uh, the outline of everything and kind of mark it with a sharpie and that will give me an area or an area that will give me an idea of where the fender is so I know how close to the line to cut away uh, for some of the excess material that's underneath all of this so that is uh, next see I've now cut away uh, some of the uh, excess little pieces I didn't need and um, I've already cut away the whole rest of the fender as you can see so you can kind of see all up inside that craziness right now and basically the next step will be to uh, sand along this line and along this top line right where that mark is and just follow all this and sand uh, this area and then on the fender that's laying down here I have to go inside of there and uh, finish or also sand uh, along the surfaces for bonding uh, as well and then I got to clean everything up with acetone and uh, you know get rid of the dust and all that stuff so that's the next step <laughs> guys so now I have finished uh, sanding and prepping all the various surfaces uh, to the fender and the side uh, side piece up front and that's where I'll be applying the bond uh, adhesive stuff that I have and uh, I'll use the Clico pins to hold everything together and clamp it down uh, with some force and that should uh, give a nice um, you know bond uh, for when it cures and everything uh, the temperature is pretty warm in here. I have my AC on, which you can probably hear in the background. I did have my exhaust fans on for when I was doing the sanding to kind of get the dust out of here. And so that sucked all the hot air out as well. But uh, but anyway, so now the temperature in the garage is a lot hotter and that's going to reduce the working time that I have with, uh, with the Bond um, adhesive stuff. I, it, it's a maximum of about 60 minutes on you know, a temperature of 70 degrees or so, but now that it's a lot warmer in here, around 80, I think my working time is going to be closer to 30 minutes, and so I'll need to kind of run through it and, and you know, not slow down for any of the uh, uh, 
areas of the, the fender. So I'm going to do that right now, and then I will work on the front section or the front fender and all that in probably another video. Uh, there's a lot more uh, to that fender, and I'll have to build some supports and things like that for that as well. Uh, the back area, I didn't have to have any supports. It's basically using the body, you know, the existing body uh, to hold everything together, so that makes it a lot easier. Um, the front's a little bit more complex, plus I have all the intricate vents and holes and things like that that I won't have to work around. But, uh, but anyway, so with that, uh, let's get started with the uh, bond. All right guys, so one little trick, um, since I'm working with pretty strong epoxy on the fender and I'm using these pins and to make sure that they do not get stuck, what I do is I uh, squeeze them out uh, so that the rivet piece comes out and I put it into like pure uh, carnauba wax and I just kind of dip it in there. I don't really get a whole lot on there, just enough to coat it. And that way um, when this stuff cures, I can pull these back out and they won't be bonded in the car uh, with everything else. So usually I'll come through about uh, you know a couple hours into the curing time, and then I'll just give them a little twist just to make sure that they're they're free. So anyway, that, with that, I'm getting back to it. All right, guys. Well, this is it. I have now uh, put all the bonding uh, adhesive all along the areas that I prepped, and I now have the Clecos back in, and they're, they are applying some clamping force. As you can tell, it's actually squeezing uh, the uh, bond material out. You can see right there, and it's kind of, you can, it's all covered. I can see the white underneath all of this. I don't see any air holes or air bubbles. You can actually see through that uh, before. So that's uh, that's it. It's doing its job. It's got some good clamping force going on. I'm pretty worn out from all of this, but uh, just because it's so hot. Man, it's crazy hot. But 
everything's being squeezed out like I was hoping and I can come back and clean all that up later. Down here I had to actually use three uh, super long rivets uh, just to pull this piece in a little, oof, a little bit more. Um, this area had a little bit of a gap that I didn't like. I knew it was there and I was trying to figure out you know how I was gonna do that. I was either gonna screw it down or, or uh, use rivets and rivets I can always come back and drill out and they sand and come out pretty easy uh, when I'm doing bodywork stuff so not a big deal but anyway uh, I have another one right there too actually so so I have all the Clecos in holding this piece together everything's being all squeezed out kind of goopy and I'll come back in about an hour or two and rotate the Clecos to make sure they're not sticking uh, and being bonded with the uh, with the bond <laughs> adhesive. So, uh, that's about it really. Um, next week, I'll come back and bond all this together and do the supporting and stuff that I have to do with the front fender. I actually uh, pretty much ran out of uh, the adhesive, mainly because I tested it before I even got started. So I'd already used up a good little portion of uh, the material. And then, um, and then I have a little bit left. Uh, you know about a inch and a half or so in the tube so not enough to really move on to the next part so i'm going to order some more i may order some of the 3m kind and just experiment with it as well to see which which one i like uh, better but so far this has seemed to be doing pretty good it's holding well and that's about it so now it's all bonded together there's no turning back now <laughs> um and i'm actually excited to have all this finally done so i can you know, be done with the bodywork part portion of this and move on uh, to this front section and then duplicate everything on the other side uh, and bond the panels on the other side. And then it will be off to uh, the body shop. I'll put the engine stuff back together, get it running and started and all that. Do the cutout of the hood. I have decided I am going to cut this little hood section out instead of doing the flip up style. I'm going to go more towards the standard style of hood and that's just going to make things a lot uh, more convenient and easier uh, to work on and get parts for uh, and not so much crazy engineering and allow me a little bit more space for uh, cooling and uh, you know heat exchangers and things like that up front so I'm not I'm not really worried about not having the tilt up hood anymore you know so um, so anyway with that I'll uh, see you guys in the next video